Storybook Brawl was nice enough to send me some dust codes, so I'm doing another giveaway. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can enter to win. What is up, everybody? I'm No Lux Given, and today we are going to be taking a look at a Wonder Waddle hatball game on the newest patch of Storybook Brawl. And the new patch has brought some interesting new toys to play around with, specifically Princess P. And this hatball video is going to include the new Princess P unit. And I thought that that was pretty cool to show how you can use Princess P in a hatball comp as well in a way that is really, really powerful. We're gonna to wanna to pick up Hermes Boots here, so that way we can guarantee that slay with Kitty Cup Purse, and just continue to have a bunch of early game cash as Wonder Waddle. Even though we'll probably wind up losing our next combat, we'll have a bunch of gold and be able to do some really sweet stuff in our future combat. So we take four damage here, but that is the price to pay. The other thing going on with this patch is you can see a magic research in this shop with brand new art. And that is going to make this game really, really difficult in a fun way. Probably a little frustrating for some new players, but I thought it was a nice additional challenge to have all of the art randomized uh, effectively, which is very difficult when Crystal Ball relies on you making your plays as quickly as possible and determining what's in the shop and can you cast this spell and when everything kind of blends together, it can be a little bit trickier. One thing that I might like to see in the future is some type of glow around targeted spells or a different border for targeted spells. Maybe give them a blue border for that crystal ball, uh, which will at least help for the non-colorblind people um, and uh, recognizing some of those things earlier in that early portion of the game uh, could be fun. We'll wind up casting a Shrink Ray here and then picking up a few more units since we are lacking, but mainly looking for that Blind Mice and that Wizard's Familiar to round out our board. Those are some of the better units that you can get on Wonder Waddle. Primarily Blind Mouse is what I was rolling for. That's why I wanted all of that early game cash on the Kitty Cup Purse. But I think that we are doing pretty good here nonetheless. We're going to have Angry, or I'm sorry, not Angry, Lucky to get a little bit more early game cash. And um, Brave Princess now also building towards a Crystal Ball herself. We will pump up that Kitty Cup Purse just to try to get a little bit more gold from there. And then I'm actually just going to sell off Cinderella. Um, I don't actually think Cindy is super useful when you are playing Wonder Waddle just because you're going to churn through so many other treasures that paying gold by casting spells to cast a, uh, or to grab a tier two treasure, I generally just don't think is super powerful. One thing that's kind of interesting about this game though is this isn't going to be one of those games where we just immediately get the crystal ball and immediately get the Merlin's hat. We're gonna have to work a little bit for it, which honestly I find more fun. Um, we, we do some silly stuff to generate some gold and then use that gold to generate some additional chances at tier three treasures in a way that I think is really, really fun in this one. And ultimately, just makes things a lot more interesting. So we pick up this stag here and we do have the option to take a treasure map or some treasures that I'm not super excited about. So I take the treasure map and now I'm actually looking for either blind mouse or wizards familiar or a golden chicken. And we wind up finding the wizards familiar here. So now we can pick up a tier four treasure and tier four treasure. I'm really looking for forking rod but I'll take a fool's gold. That'll give us more chances to, or just more gold to roll and potentially find these um, tier three animals for Wonder Waddle. And then I'm going to wind up um, Shard of the Ice Queening the Stag into a Wicked Witch. And part of the reason that I used to do this is because by removing the Stag that I had, it made it so that we were more likely to find additional stags in the future to try to find that crystal ball down the line. 
now you don't have to do this. So now was maybe a mistake to do so, but we do wind up getting a bigger uh, kitty cut purse for it. And then we find the Merlin's hat. So I'll pick up the prize pig, still looking for that crystal ball though. And especially now that we have Merlin's hat and fool's gold, we're just gonna stick around and roll for some tier three animals. Um, this is definitely not a combo, but at the same time it is because four extra gold could be one additional tier three animal each turn, which is potentially uh, a look for a crystal ball. So that's kind of the idea here, but uh, yeah, definitely a little bit silly um, in the fact that we are making our spells cheaper, but then also not playing any spells. And we've been taking a lot of damage, by the way, in the meantime. We take 11 down to four and we are almost dead. But you know what? We are going to see what we can turn this into. Merlin's slippers not doing anything for us this turn. I mean, they'll potentially allow us to pick up some spells on the cheap because we have the Merlin's hat. But then we find the crystal ball. So now we are doing some crystal ball things. Um, you will notice during this game, and I talked about this in the second half of my patch notes review yesterday. Uh, but you will notice that during this game, we've got to wait for all spell animations to play out which like feed the kraken those ones are particularly long before new things roll into the shop and we can roll out of there so that makes some of these turns pretty dicey here we've got uh five gold now with only a few seconds left and yeah some of this stuff is going to get a little bit hairy uh we'll wind up not using all of our gold every turn but we'll see what we can do i'm going to pick up the golden chicken before picking up the blind mouse because we want to take that golden chicken with us into the next turn as well. And with that blind mouse, we're basically just looking for forking rod and we'll toss the Merlin slippers for only that effectively. Not going to take Moonsong Horn, not going to take deck of many things. I would like to eventually drop the Merlin's hat for forking rod, but we can't do that until we find Aeon. Um, so yeah, just a little bit awkward on the ordering of everything. This shop has a double mix of whistle, so we'll use that to grab a Wombats in Disguise upgraded. Not too shabby. And then if we find another True Love's Kiss, then we'll, we will be able to throw that on the Wombats. And we do, so this gives us an upgraded tier 6 unit, and that is going to be a Doom Breath. Not too shabby. I'll wind up picking up a golden chicken, which brings a little bit more econ into next turn. But I really like all of these treasures. Oh, I'm actually going to sell it off right there. And then uh, I guess that is fine too. And then I'll pick up another uh, spell weaver and wind up just tripling up on this shadow assassin uh, just to make use of the remaining time in our shop before we gotta go into our brawl here. But definitely, uh, a lot of these turns are gonna cut it pretty close because of the fact that we are uh, like trying to recognize all of the new arts and everything that is going on. But I think we've stabilized at this point. We are at six health, but we are kind of killing it at this point in the game. Um, no real tier three treasures am I really even looking for at this point. We've already used the treasure map and have the Merlin's hat and the crystal ball. So I'm not really looking for anything. I realized that after, and that probably just means that I don't really need to be Wonder Waddle anymore. We do find a Scion of the Storm and Wonder Waddle will give us a little bit of extra gold when we pick up copies of Golden Chicken. So that part's fine. Uh, but other than that, we don't have too much else going on. I'm going to go ahead and flip this Scion of the Storm because it is just temporary. And we get a Burning Beard, I believe is the new name of it, to go along with our Haunted Creeper. So that's kind of cool. Um, it means that the... Um, He'll get like some nice bonuses this turn because that's kind of a combo, but we won't have the Haunted Creeper forever. Uh, so that's not going to be anything super crazy for us. We do lose our Doom Breath, but uh, it takes out a few units on the way. And uh, yeah, and then, the, then the Darkwood Creeper is going to turn back into a Black Cat. And uh, I have men uh, messaged the devs as well about getting... Uh, mix a whistle renamed into like Bippity Bopify or something like that was my suggestion uh, to play into the theme of it being a temporary transformation. I do think that we will see that at some point in the game, uh, which I'm excited for to uh, have have some small kind of impact 
on this game that I play every single day and upload a YouTube video for every single day. Uh, we are going to wind up finding ourselves in the possession of an Ashwood Elm. So now I'm going to have somewhere to cast all of those spells that give more health. Uh, all of those are going to go on our newfound tree friend, and then I'm also going to lock onto Aeon. Pretty important thing to note there that I lock, then I cast the spells, and this will mean that we are actually not locking onto Masquerade Ball, which is by design, because that would mean that our next turn is over, and we don't want to have to deal with that. So next turn we will be able to pick up Aeon, and then we will still have spells in the same shop, which we are then able to potentially pick up as well a bunch of damage to a Peter Pants and uh, taking them out as we move along. Don't really want Croc spells for any of our current mages. I would consider that for Scion of the Storm, but not really consider that for anything else that we got going on here. Gonna double up on a Golden Chicken as well before giving this Ashwood Elm just a little bit more health even so. And we could have tried for Genie's Wish, but since we have the Merlin Slippers, I felt that it was just more useful to roll rather than um, going for the chance of something else because you can see just how many more spells we are still able to find this turn um, just with the gold that we had. And then we're not gonna worry about these evil twins either. Because I really don't want more Doom Breaths or Ashwood Elms. They could help us build into a tier 6 treasure. It's kind of an interesting thing. We could cast two Evil Twins next turn. Uh, but then even that is like not that great a use of our gold, even if the Aeon does slay. So not going to worry about it here. Let's see how Doom Breath does against this opponent. Okay, well, it does nothing. My opponent with a really good backline but they don't actually have the treasures to support it. So they are really just looking for a Princess P at this point in the game, but we are looking to hit them for six damage and almost take them out there. We'll have our spells cost three less this turn, so that's kind of neat. And then we'll also pick up another... Oh, do I even pick up the Spell Weaver? I might not, yeah. Because we already kind of have a full board. Um, maybe I would pick up a Scion of the Storm at this point, but even that becomes really tough to justify. We basically have everything that we need right now, other than like, maybe we could pick up some blind mice to try to find a forking rod and eventually like triple this Aeon. So that way we're getting more stuff from that. But for the most part, I think that we're doing fine. And then we wind up picking up a Princess P, which doesn't do anything. But like I said, I'm kind of interested in trying it out this game and seeing what we can make happen with this new unit. We do have something that uh, the Princess P is good for something here and that we can cast our Queen's Graces on it. And um, that is just a way to cast that otherwise uncastable spell because we don't have any other royals. So that part of it is nice. We see an opponent here with a dedicated Princess P board and they are looking pretty scary, but we are slightly stronger here with our mages and are able to take them out. And I think now we're on to the finals against this Pied Piper, 34 health, so anything can happen. And I do like Baba Yaga for two reasons. One, Baba Yaga means that we could now potentially toss Merlin's hat. And I think that that is definitely a really good aspect to the card, because now if Aeon slays, we are gonna have cheap spells, and that frees up a treasure slot, which could be very good in giving us just a more powerful board. But the other thing that it does is it supports Princess P, which gives us a reason to mess around with this new unit in a really fun way. I'm also going to wind up True Love's Kissing the Green Knight. That'll give us a uh, bear stain, but I just really wasn't looking to play a... Um, a uh, Green Knight in that slot. However, Gumblegore, I think I could mess with. Gumblegore is a mage and also a support unit. So I think that we can do some fun stuff with this coming up. You can see that the Princess P has made the Baba Yaga absolutely massive. That's kind of what gets these gears turning here is that 
maybe we should be using this Gumblegore, and maybe we shouldn't be playing Aeon. I think Aeon is actually potentially our weakest unit here, so I'm going to wind up moving my board around like so, and then I'll throw Spellweaver into slot one, I think, after some messing around with it all. I take a look at this, I'm like, oh, should I play Baba Yaga in this slot? And then um, just realize that I just shouldn't be playing Aeon ultimately, and that I should be trying to use as much of my gold as I can to make this um, Princess P as big as it can possibly go. And that is just gonna give us a massive amount of stats there because she gets triple the buffs from these supports. So we've got a buffed up Gumblegore and a Baba Yaga supporting them. Aeon on the bench is still growing the team, so that's still cool. But then Princess P gets to give uh, 270 attack to both of the ranged units that are supporting it. And that is just going to be absolutely massive. And we'll see that here. Both of those go up to the 300s and ultimately give us a, a really, really strong board. And that is enough to win the combat this turn. We're still going to have to win a few more, though, because my opponent has got a bunch of life. So at this point, I know the drill. Every targeted spell is going on that Princess P, other than this one. That can go on Romeo, but everything else going to go on the Princess, and we're going to try to make it as big as we can, because every spell that we cast on Princess P actually gets cast four times. Once on Princess P, no, 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 five times. Yeah, it gets cast once on Princess P, then doubled on Baba Yaga, and double on Boomhilda. So we're getting five times the efficacy out of something like Luna's Grace and Burning Palm, uh, because those stats are then being multiplied across our back line as well. So that is really, really strong. And I'm just gonna lock onto this Luna's Grace and Burning Palm here. By the way, we've climbed back up to 14 health slowly throughout this game as we just get more and more healthy and with all of these ranged units i did think that fog was good because we just need to not lose the range battle but we are battling up against an echo wood from a full trees build here and looking pretty strong while we are doing so just going to cast as many targeted spells other than feed the kraken too not going to feed my princess peas to the kraken uh but everything else the burning palm uh, can go on to that uh, because that's just going to be a lot of stats and I think that this is really an interesting I don't know just a just an interesting way to think about mages like maybe mages do actually just want a princess P I'm not totally sure but it seems like it is working nonetheless in this combat we now for the first time have more health than our opponent, I believe, for the first time. Yeah, yeah. As we as we have now gone up to 15, and they have now gone down to 9, and then we've also made them go down to, uh, or we've gone up to 16 by the end of it. We cast a few more spells, and all we have to do is win this combat with either Boomhilda or our Spellweaver, and we will take my opponent out here, and it looks like we will be able to do so. Their Echo Wood does have a Phoenix Feather, but we have more ranged units, and we will be able to get the win. There we go, messing around with the new emote layout as well. Really sweet game. Uh, we definitely got the Crystal Ball and, and the Hat um, early enough that we were able to do some powerful stuff, but we also stopped down to pick up some Fool's Gold and also had that really fun opening with the Kitty Cup Purse and the Hermes Magic Boots that made things pretty interesting in the early game. But I thought the most interesting part of this game is that Princess P might actually just be a good mage. So I'm definitely interested to play even more Princess P games now. I've got another Princess P game coming tomorrow with Trophy Hunter. So you are not going to want to miss that one. That is going to be it for me today, though. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lux Given. Peace. Here's the details for my giveaway this week. Just leave a comment on any of my videos that includes the word animal. New week, new code word. And you'll be entered into a chance to win a 4000 dust code. The reason that I say to include the word, that way I can differentiate between the people just leaving a comment and those that are actually interested in the dust to make sure that it goes to a person that will appreciate it. And there's no limit to how many times you can enter. You can go back and comment on some of my previous videos. I've been uploading daily 
storybook role videos for the past seven or eight months at this point, so I'm sure there is some sweet content that you have yet to see. And yeah, you can enter multiple times. I will do a new code next week. And the other thing that I wanted to say is that if a bunch of people enter, I will give away more codes. So that's just gonna be limited by how many people are entering and how many people are commenting. Let's get this channel to over 1,000. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.